Your life is a sacred journey, and it is about change, growth, discovery, movement, transformation, continuously expanding your vision of what is possible, stretching your soul, learning to see clearly and deeply, listening to your intuition, taking courageous challenges at every step along the way. You are on the path, exactly where you are meant to be right now. And from here, you can only go forward, shaping your life story into a magnificent tale of triumph, of healing, of courage, of beauty, of wisdom, of power, of dignity, and of love. Caroline Adams. A labyrinth is an ancient symbol that relates to wholeness. It combines the imagery of the circle and the spiral into a meandering but purposeful path. The labyrinth represents a journey to our own center and back again out into the world. Labyrinths have long been used as meditation and prayer tools. Labyrinths and mazes have often been confused. When most people hear of a labyrinth, they think of a maze. A labyrinth is not a maze. A maze is like a puzzle to be solved. It has twists, turns, and blind alleys. It is a left brain task that requires logical, sequential analytical activity to find the correct path into the maze and out. A labyrinth is a right brain task. It involves intuition, creativity, and imagery. With a maze, many choices must be made and an active mind is needed to solve the problem of finding the center. With a labyrinth, there's only one choice to be made. The choice is to enter or not. A more passive, receptive mindset is needed. The choice is whether or not to walk a spiritual path. This is a tarp from Home Depot that I plan to make a labyrinth out of. This is the medium duty canvas drop cloth, 12 feet by 15 feet. Here goes. I chose painter's canvas because it's washable and you can fold it easily and it's inexpensive. This large tarp was 30 something dollars from Home Depot. Very inexpensive. The cheapest labyrinth I found on Etsy was $350 and not this large. So I can't completely spread it out. This is our basement room. It has books, toys, firewood, fishing poles, sort of our playroom and storage area for all of our hobbies and things. So I pushed the sofa back and I've got some um, extra material. So we'll see how big I make it. I used yarn to draw out my pattern. I tried another pattern that was a little more complicated before this one, but decided it was too much. I want my labyrinth to be beneficial to those who participate in using it, but also a bit simple. We're gonna use colors and different themes and ideas and even symbols and objects in it for different types of groups. So it's okay that the labyrinth is somewhat simple. I did walk it to make sure it actually goes from beginning to center and it does. And so now my job is to get the tape measure and even out um, the path. You can see I've got areas that the path is too small and too large. So I've got to now go and even that out and then I'm going to chalk it out. So now I have chalked it out. As you can see, there is a chalk line, hopefully along the pathway of yarn that I made. The yarn would move in places and such, but it was actually much, much easier to do the chalk line than I expected it was gonna be. So right now, I'm hopeful. Okay, so see, there's the chalk line. And now for the permanent markers. Yikes. I'm using these Metal Pro 
Ultra Resistant Permanent Markers. That's the brand. I've never heard of that brand, but that's what we're using. It says they won't dry out up to 15 days with the cap off. Wow, that's amazing. Extended cap off time writes on most surfaces. I'm using black, blue, red, and green. Uh, so the path changes colors to represent the changes that we go through in life and the various seasons, emotions, feelings, experiences, situations, personalities, belief systems. You can do so many things with that. So we're gonna uh, try using these four colors. See what happens. So I have drawn over the chalk lines with the markers and now I have to lift the string. And here it is, my labyrinth. So this one is a sort of an oblong type shape. I did that because that was the shape of the material. And I wanted to use as much material as I could with the space I have to work with. So walk the labyrinth with me. We're walking it kind of fast, of course, just to show you path that I made. It does fit two feet in it, which is good. I was a little nervous about that. And then you go around. You can stop in some of these spaces, especially if there's a little more room. You could even sit here if you wanted to, sitting here in this spot to stop and think about something, to stop and feel something. And then you turn here and continue to walk this middle path that leads to the red center part. And here we are at the center. I decided to dedicate the labyrinth in honor of Dr. Penny. She was my mentor and the light on my path that led me to chaplaincy. She encouraged me and believed in me. She set an example for me. She has cared for hundreds and hundreds of patients who are battling mental illness, depression, anxiety, and other illnesses and struggles. She is a counselor. She is a chaplain. She is an amazing person and friend and child of God. I put a heart in the center of the labyrinth uh, to represent the heart of the matter, the emotions, finding hope, finding forgiveness, finding grace, finding peace, whatever our theme is, the day we walk the labyrinth or no theme, we all share one thing and that's a heartbeat. And I also dedicated the labyrinth in memory of Dr. Marion Wallace. She was an advocate for spiritual care for patients with mental health issues. She understood the hope that spirituality brings to a patient. She also was a friend and a mentor. I had the privilege and honor of officiating her wedding in February before she died tragically in October. But what we wanna do is remember her work and her heart to care for those battling mental illness, to care for those needing support, the holistic person, physical, emotional, and spiritual. We want to carry on her love of people I also added this quote, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Helen Keller. Helen Keller was born in Tuscumbia, Alabama. I studied her, went to her house many times and her writings and her work and her miraculous, amazing life her fortitude and resilience and her teacher, Annie Sullivan, have been such an 
influence and impact on my life. And I think this quote by Helen about the feelings of the heart, faith and hope in the heart is appropriate for the labyrinth.